What's going on, Omni Buddies? Mitch here, and today we are doing a little bit of book care. Yeah, we're not doing an overview, we're not doing a uh, behind the scenes uh, library tour or anything like that. Us comic collectors occasionally run into problems with our books, and when that happens, we can either, especially if they're new, we can either send them back or we can fix them up and make them pretty much as good as new, if not just pretty dang close. So, Today we are going to look at my Monster Size Hellboy book. Now this book is insanely huge. It is massive. Uh, but you know what? When I got this book, I took it out of shrink wrap. All the corners are perfect. Uh, the spine looks great. Uh, there's no major issues, no like real scuffs or anything like that. So I knew this book was in pretty good shape. But like a lot of books, when you go to open it up, sometimes you discover some issues. And these books, when they're just giant like that, sometimes the issues, uh, they tend to have a little bit more issues here and there. And this one, uh, let's see if I can kind of find it a little bit to kind of show you. Uh, there we go. So this one has a little bit, I don't know if you can see it right there, but the page signatures, because uh, each kind of section of pages uh, that you can see in there is called a signature and uh, so or clumps or whatever you want to call it but signature is what it is and occasionally those signatures will kind of come a little bit loose from the spine or maybe uh, in worst case scenario the if there it's a sewn binding the thread actually breaks and rips and then uh, you got to be real careful but with this in this book uh, my page signature, the first page signature, and actually I noticed this on a lot of uh, larger books, kind of the first page, first and last, so the kind of the first on the outside of the text block, uh, tend to come loose a little bit easier, a little bit more often than the ones in the middle, probably because they are the ones doing the vast majority of the flexing. So when that happens, uh, we have at our disposal, every comic book collector should have at their disposal, a bottle of neutral pH adhesive. And I have all this stuff linked down in this description here of this video. But every comic book collector should have this in their book collect in their uh, arsenal. And they should also have binding tape in there, which is like crazy one-sided super sticky tape that is meant to flex and really hold binding together. I've used this many times and it has not let me down. It's not the prettiest thing, but if you need to hold a book together, it can hold it together. Uh, like if your end sheet end paper starts to tear and the whole text block might start coming apart and you're worried about it, slap some of this you know, up and down it right along the seam, uh, kind of straddling it. And dang, this stuff can save your life. So everyone should have that glue and everyone should have some binders tape because it can save your life um, and really uh, extend the life of your book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I am going to go about fixing uh, or, you know, upkeeping this book uh, rather than trying to send it back or anything like that. I'm just going to fix it myself because you know what? This neutral pH glue is basically exactly what book binders, when they're building these big old books, uh, small books, all that kind of stuff, this is the kind of glue that they use because it doesn't yellow, it doesn't really crack, um, and it's meant to, when it dries, to flex. And that's the big thing with books is because you want that glue to be able to flex when you're opening it up everything. Uh, this stuff is... Uh, neutral pH so it's not gonna like eat away at your book or the pages or it's not acidic or anything like that so this is the stuff you want to get super cheap a big bottle of this was like 20 bucks uh, you can get like gallons of the stuff or like smaller things for like eight bucks if you just want to have some on hand uh, for I, I do some kind of book binding on the side so I have a little bit more uh, but sometimes you can buy just like the little smaller bottles and they're like seven eight bucks uh, all that, again, is linked in the description, but uh, yeah. So you know what? Let's turn the camera down and let's fix this book. All right, so here we have the Monster Size Hellboy book. So uh, this thing is huge. Anyways, first things first, like I said, we have some neutral pH 
uh, adhesive here, bookbinders glue, great stuff, highly recommend. Grab that. Couple other tools that I wanted to go over really, really quick is this bookbinders tape. Definitely pick up a roll of this. Super handy to have for any of the books. I know like my kids uh, are super hard on their like board books when they were younger and some of them were pretty special but you know just kind of needed some quick repairs or something like that slap a little bit of this on there uh it's one side of adhesive you just peel this back and off and dang it really helps uh to re uh reinforce those hinges a couple other things uh the, i bought just like a basic book binders kit uh, off Amazon, which is again linked. Some great scissors for this stuff. We have some, they're called bone presses. These aren't bone, but uh, really nice if you're actually uh, like doing any binding or anything like that for like some nice strong presses. Really handy, some different, you know, versions of that for uh, whatever you need. Uh, definitely if you're doing some bigger uh, adhesive projects, like if you're actually like painting on to put in these end sheets, a big paintbrush for that stuff. These bristles got kind of crispy. Anyways, uh, that's super handy. And then also one thing that pops up all the time, I see people talking about these uh, ribbons on their books, these things, this red thing. Uh, that oftentimes when you go to open up a book, people will be like, oh, my ribbon's coming off, it's broken, like my book's broken because this little red or black or blue or whatever it ends up being, whatever color the publisher uses, um, do, you know, rips, comes loose and, it, you know, so the text block is up and this thing's kind of rippled along and it's not attached to the back of the text block. This is strictly decorative. So don't worry if that is coming loose or anything like that. Um, people think that it is actually um, a part of the book and it is structural. It is not. Like these are end ribbons, the same thing. This is a black one. Uh, trying to get it in focus there ish. So that's all the deeper it goes. It's like half an inch. It is not very deep. It is strictly uh, just aesthetic. It is not, oops, there went a piece. It is not structural at all. You do not even need them. So if they're coming loose, don't worry about it. But if they are coming loose and you want to worry about it, grab some of your glue and uh, get it on there. So the other thing that I just discovered these the other day, super handy, these, sorry, camera's all crazy. Um, these little bottles are super nice and they are really fine tipped on there and you can squeeze the glue out just through that tip and really apply it exactly where you want it rather than trying to, for a while I was trying to use just uh, a small paintbrush versus, you know, cause I had this giant one and that you can't, you know, can't be very exact with. So I'd use like a really small paintbrush and try and get it in there. But dang, this thing, uh, I bought, I think there are five bottles for like, five or six bucks, something like that, but they come with these really fine tips on them. I mean, you can pop the tip off and get a little bit uh, less fine of an application, but these right there, holy cow, so, so nice. So I would definitely say pick up your glue and then pick up some of these bottles because wow, really, really nice. So let's get into what is wrong with this book. And also the ribbon, if you wanna in, uh, put some ribbons in here, you could. Um, you know, if this, you could go over the top of the end ribbon if you, or, and you know, the end ribbon, if you wanted and, uh, you know, just come over the top and just glue those, this ribbon on. If you wanted to do some ribbon bookmarks, you don't have to, but so what happens with some books is, uh, you can see along here, uh, there are kind of chunks of pages. This one's a little bit harder to see, but on a lot of comics you can see, uh, well really on any Book, mostly you can see that there will be like chunks of natural kind of chunks of pages and a lot of times you can see where they like fold and then they meet right there and they kind of meet in the middle and then they kind of curve around so the whole you know there's a whole signature is what it's called and that whole signature has all the pages inside of it for like a section and a lot of times it's about with comics and graphic novels it's almost a 
full issue. Like it's like they took each issue and put it in here. And then that's sewn in a lot of times if it's a nice sewn binding, those are all sewn together because you know you have the fold and then they punch holes through it and then the uh, 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 string, whatever you want to call it, um, goes through and they sew it, they sew it uh, all to each other. So it's sewed in the back and comes through that whole signature. So all those pages are, you know, the middle of it, the, the string goes all the way through and then uh, ties it all together. So on occasion, that string might break or maybe become a little loose or something like that. And then you end up with like a signature of pages, like that chunk of pages is a little looser than normal. And a lot of times what happens, you can see right here, maybe you can't see, but this one's come a little bit loose, the signature right here. And a lot of times that happens on the very uh, front or end of the book because that's on that hinge right there and it ends up moving the most and it ends up getting the most wear and tear. And so on my book right here, let me get some of this stuff out of the way. That doesn't need to be in here anymore because really all we need is two things. This and the other thing I didn't talk about is parchment paper, wax paper, whatever. You're always going to want some wax paper. Let's rip some off, whether you're going to want it on on your desk, underneath it, or wherever. Um, this way, we're, this one we're going to do a little bit differently. We're not going to do it. We don't need to protect the desk. We need to protect the insides of these pages. So this one, as you can see, these pages kind of let loose and they're not very well attached right there. You can see that there's that in the gutter right there and they kind of came open and you can kind of see. So what I'm going to do is a very quick, very simple fix, especially with a bottle like this. Like you can tell, see like this brush, I'm not gonna be able to apply glue in there very precisely. Uh, even a small paintbrush is gonna be very difficult. Uh, but with this thing, I don't even need a paintbrush. I can just squeeze it in and go. And so let's do that. Let's get some glue in here. We don't wanna get overly, uh, crazy with the glue. We want to have, you know, a fair amount, but we don't want to get overly zealous with it. <laughs> so, and this might take, you know, sometimes people need to do, you know, they don't want to get zealous with it. And whoop, see, I got a little bit, a little bit crazy right there. Um, but that's okay. What is nice about this glue is it does come off. The other thing you want to do is have some paper towel. I do not have paper towel, so I, because I forgot, but that's really it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this, push it down a little bit. I'm just going to make sure that, yeah, so I don't want it to get too far out there. So what's nice about this glue is that um, what I've done before, like I have... So that's it. That's all you need to do. Um, <laughs> there, I, I pretty much fixed it. Now you want to, I put this in here because I didn't want the pages getting stuck together somehow. I wanted the glue to, you know, only be in the spine. So that's all I need to do. And then you want to weight it down. Now this book is giant enough and it's all on that one side. So I'm just going to flip this book over and leave it laying like that. Um, now, a lot of times what I've seen happen is, especially like with these end ribbons or sometimes like that, like books might need a little bit extra love with them. So I, you might, I've seen people and I've personally had to do it, you know, where you have to kind of take it a little bit at a time and go, go slowly and work it you know, a little bit at a time. You don't want to overdo it. So you might end up having to, you know, fix your book and do this process more than one time. You might have to do it two times or three times. I've seen people with, uh, you know, with some really, really rough spines with, you know, um, what was it? Ultimate Spider-Man, something like that 
had that notoriously bad spine uh, where people had to re-glue it, you know, three, four times before it finally took. And even sometimes when it finally took, it wasn't perfect. Now, was it better? A lot better? Yeah, sure. But it was then readable. And especially when you get books like that that are notoriously bad, even if you send it back to get a new one, it could have been like that one had a print run that was just that print run was pretty rough. So no matter which book you're going to get, the oddball is the one that is, you know, going to work out for you and be good, good print quality versus the vast majority of them were all suffering from spine issues. So even if you send it back or go find a new one and exchange it, you're probably going to run into that same issue. So being able to fix it on your own and take your time and do this, this glue, you know, after uh, you know, I fixed uh, um, someone's Bible the other day and I only had to wait, like the whole hardcover casing came off and the, uh, I had to put a whole new, set, whole new spine backing on it and all that. Um, and I only had to wait about 20, 25 minutes for the glue to get set enough to where I could continue working with it. Uh, so this glue dries relatively fast, but you don't have to, like, obviously, like, I would wait, um, you know, probably at least a few hours. More than likely, I would wait 8 to 12 hours. Um, if I was very concerned, I would wait 24 hours before really cracking it open and checking it and putting any stress on it. So, uh, but if you're gonna do a bunch of work and you, you know, work a little bit at a time throughout, like maybe there's a few signatures that are loose, you know, wait 20, 30 minutes, uh, and then come back and do the next one and then let it sit, you know, for that 24 hours and really let it dry. Um, and by dry, this doesn't really like it becomes less, ta it doesn't become tacky anymore, but it can still flex, which is amazing that this glue can flex so much but still be dry. And what's really cool is when I've rebound trade paperback books as hardcovers, which I actually did with some Hellboy BPRD books um, and some Usagi books, I guess all Dark Horse, I don't know why. But um, what's really cool is this glue can become tacky again. And when I took trade paperbacks, I would take a, a, a hair dryer on high and just run it up and down and get that glue really tacky and wet again and then the pages just peel off and the text block would just peel off of the trade paperback cover and then you have a whole text block still together super cool this glue is amazing again check out the link in the description for it and make sure to always have some on hand uh, as long as the bottle is sealed really nicely and like these little bottles are really nice to seal and you know these big bottles they obviously seal nicely um, so the glue can last quite a while, which is nice. Uh, you want to apply it at room temperature, so you want to make sure it's not too hot or too cold, you know, mid-60s to low-70s probably, uh, sort of a range in there. Um, but yeah, definitely hit up this glue. And then we have this parchment paper in there to make sure that nothing sticks to other things that it shouldn't be sticking to until it's dry. And that is it. All right, so... Like I said, it's pretty simple, pretty easy, especially if you just take the time, spend, you know, what is it? Eight bucks for a small bottle of glue, uh, eight bucks for a, like five of those little like needle bottles for applying the glue very thin, uh, very, uh, very um, kind of uh, exactly where you want it to be rather than trying to brush it on with those big brushes or anything like that. So, you know what, less than 15, 20 bucks, and you have yourself a kit where you can uh, fix your books if anything goes wrong with them, or you know what, if you're feeling a little bit nervous about something, those end, the, the uh, end ribbons, the end bands come off, or you wanna put a ribbon in your book, you can do all that with this glue, and you can fix those things up, no problem. All right, I hope that helped. Uh, let me know if you have any tips questions or anything like that on bookbinding, comics, taking care of them. Uh, let me know if you want me to address any other issues or anything like that. Or, you know what, if you have some better ideas on how to go about doing this, I'm always willing to learn. Hopefully we are 
all, hopefully we all are willing to learn and uh, keep pushing our hobby forward and learn how to take care of these books, not just read them, but when something does happen. Dude, I dropped this book on my foot when I was pulling it out to do this video and I wouldn't be surprised if I have a bruise from it, but it, like the corner of it hit right between my big toe and the other toe and took some flesh with it. Dang, this book is heavy. <laughs> Anyways, so be careful with your books because they will retaliate uh, is kind of the moral of the story. Anyways, that's it. Hope that helped. Uh, take care. Stay cool.